there goes the crazy spin dance. What do you think? Pretty good, right? Hi, I'm Coach Newton. Welcome for the spring break coding challenge for kids. This is the third challenge using Scratch. We're exploring this wonderful creative tool. Creative computing is what I'd love to call it. And the MIT Scratch team does as well. So let's get started on the challenge. You're going to earn your knowledge tokens as you go along. If you're in one of my classes. And working your way through five challenges to get from silver to the gold knowledge token. So let's get going with um, the theme, right? We are coding on. That's the key. Code on. The challenge today is let's see how those dancers spun. Let's do some of our own animation. I'll kind of show you quickly how to get started uh, based on some of the other videos. So make sure you look at uh, challenge one, two before this one. And uh, we'll guide you through the process so you can learn how to use vector art and create your own animations. All right, let's get to it. What do you say? Okay, so here we are in the Boise Greenbelt, by the way. I'm going to log in. I created uh, in previous lessons. I'm a student at SDB020. So if I log in, and I can always click my stuff folder. So let's just do a little look. Let's see. My stuff. Now I started creating a challenge number three. I'm going to going to change that to something else. Let's look at my studio. And this is where we'll find the crazy dancer code. So this is how you can look at other people's projects. And so there's that crazy dance that I had at the beginning of today's video. So let's click on that real quick. And that takes me to Coach Newton's code. Well, if you're a student and you'd like to use that code, let's do that. I'd like to show you how you do that. It's called remixing. You save a copy of this project and it gets added to your own ideas. So let's remix it. And it says, hey, it's Crazy Dance Remix. So let's call this Challenge 3. Via Remix. So now I've renamed it. And you notice it has all the code for the first dancer, the second dancer, and the third dancer. Let's do a little bit of adding our own sprite to it. You can look at this code later as you maneuver through the program, but let's add our own. So remember how to add a sprite? We choose down here a sprite. And the sprite I wanted to add was a fantasy creature called the dragon. Now that dragon's pretty big on that screen. So let's, let's change his size to 50. That makes a little smaller dragon. And let's put the dragon by their feet here. So what I'm going to show you how to do is, um, if you look at the costumes for the dragon, there are three different costumes. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click here and duplicate this one. And I'll show you with vector art, vector graphics, it's easy to change different portions. So I want the dragon to start there. It does this and it moves. I want this frame to be a little bit lower than the other one. So here's an easy way to kind of swivel it. Let's swivel the head. Move the head a little bit. Uh, let's swivel the legs. See how easy it is to swivel different parts. You click on it and kind of swivel. So if something's been created in vector art, it's really easy. So it'll look like this creature is moving. I'm going to move the head a little bit more down. And then, oops, I didn't want to move the tail up. Let's just swivel it up. All right, so there's our dragon. You'll notice it's a little bit different. And so when it goes through the animation, it'll click like this. One, two, three. So we've added. I wanted to show you how to create your own uh, frame within the sprite. It's called a costume. So let's always start with dragon A. Go back to the code. Okay, remember our control, we want to add an event that says when this is clicked, I've got some graphics. Um, first, since I'm going to be changing the graphics, I want to clear the graphics. And I want to add a change 
color effect by 25. So if I click that, you'll notice that the dragon did change um, color. Let's add a little repeat loop and let's make a move. Let's move four, let's move five steps. And remember, if he gets to the edge, I want it to bounce back. Now you notice he's not changing. And when he bounces, he turns upside down. So I'm just clicking the code. Well, I don't want him changing, turning upside down. So let's go back to motion. And if you notice in the motion, there's a rotation style. So this rotation style will always have it. So he rotates when he hits the wall there. So instead of just repeating 10 times when I click it, I want him to repeat forever. Let's do that. That'll be a lot more fun. Let's throw that away. And the other thing is I, I want it to change its looks. Let's say every time it moves, it changes the next costume and moves five steps. And let's add a little bit of a delay. Let's wait one second. Let's try this code on the dragon now. By clicking this code, um, Wow, one second is a long time, so my dragon's not moving fast enough. So let's stop that. Let's, let's run point. Let's try point one and try this. Now I'm just running this code since I'm clicking it in here. If I were to click, if you notice the code for each of the other sprites, it also will move if you click the green flag. But if you click just the code, in that sprites code, you can run just this code to test it out. Well, that's not that bad. I like the way my dragon's breathing fire, and you can see it's going through all of the costumes over and over. And if I change the weight to 0.05, I'll go even faster. And what's funny is, let's let's take out the weight completely and watch what happens. It's, it's kind of a funny dragon. So I think we do need a little bit of a weight. I like the way you can kind of test your code as you go along. So that's the nice feature in Scratch. All right. So I kind of like my fire breathing dragon. Now the thing is, this color effect is not changing. So let's let's put that inside there as well. Let's change the color effect as well. Oops. We do want all of that inside of the uh, the forever loop. There's my animated dragon. Okay, so let's run the entire program. If we hit the green flag, the dragon's dancing, or I'm going across the screen, and my animated dancers are going to start their spin when she's clicked. So there we've got our crazy dancers and the dragon that we just added with the animation. Anyway, I'd like you to go ahead and explore. You can always look at the scripts that I had for each of the dancers. You'll notice um, I had a, an event that says when the sprite is clicked, which is fun to add to make your projects interactive. So there we go. Well, I want you to enjoy the Challenge 3 Remix. You can always look in the project page. And if you look here, in the studio for code on you can add your projects into this studio right here that's how you would add it in and you can add your projects into here so you'll see uh, the crazy dance and you can add your own let's go back to my projects i'll show you something when i'm when i'm done i didn't share that yet so something that says look this project's not shared so i do want to share it and then once i do share it um, I will add it to the studio for the Spring Break Challenges. And now it'll be in the studio so all of you can see it as you join the studio. Well, uh, that's what I wanted to cover with you today for Challenge 3. Enjoy coding. Uh, don't forget to code on. And uh, don't ever give up. And have fun. Code on. If you have any questions, it's right up here. Have your parents send me an email at codeon at panucation.org. 
and we'll see you for challenge four the next day. Have fun.